Good afternoon. I'm Brenda O'Connor, Chair of the 2017 Women of Initiative Luncheon. On behalf of our co-chair, Stacy Herring, and myself, we trust you are enjoying this beautiful luncheon, honoring this year's 10 special women. We have come to the part of the program where we learn the answer to this year's question. Please tell us with what women, past or present, you would like to have lunch with and why. So please sit back and enjoy the video presentation. A heartfelt thank you for joining us today and supporting the Women's Foundation of Collier County. If I could have lunch with a woman from the past, it would be Eleanor Peck, my grandmother. Why? First, because she's my grandmother, and I miss her dearly since her passing on March 31st, 2011, at the age of 90. I am very grateful and fortunate to have had my grandmother in my life. Secondly, I would tell her all about how many people Lighthouse of Collier has served and how mentoring Angel Wings memory gowns has been rewarding. Before my grandmother's passing, I talked with my grandfather and her every Sunday to catch up, and they were always wanting updates on my community involvement. My grandparents were extremely instrumental in building, literally building and growing their church, a nonprofit, so they understood the cheers and the challenges. Lastly, I would thank my grandmother for her love, support, and passing down her tenacity gene. Her tenacious, get it done attitude was a bit overwhelming as a youngster, however much appreciated now as an adult. If Eleanor were here today, she would be front and center, beaming with joy for all the 2017 honorees. Although she is physically not here, I know my grandmother is with me today and always in spirit. If I could have lunch with a prominent woman of the past, I would select Amelia Earhart. What most interests me is how she became a pioneer in aviation at a time when many doors were closed to women. Her pursuit of a career that required extraordinary skill, bravery, and determination would be fascinating. Even though she set many aviation records, became a celebrity, and went on to be a leader of women in aviation, I believe her greatest contribution was being an advocate for women in the early 20th century. She wanted to be an example of self-reliance and independence. She encouraged women to follow their dreams. She believed that women should have equal opportunities with men in every field. The turn of the 20th century was a time that created many changes for women. In today's world, we often forget that many women took bold steps with much resistance to create more fulfilling roles and occupations. I would love to compare notes with a woman who lived an adventurous life a century ago. During the last 16 months, I have been glued to the TV, watching Fox, CNN, CBS, and sometimes MSNBC. Listening, first of all, to the candidates who were vying for the presidency then on to the election, and now we're listening to the latest spin on the political scene with our new President Trump. So when the question of lunch with a woman from the past or present was given to us, Condoleezza Rice's name came to me right away. I met her both in Naples and in Dallas, and each time I felt she would have been a great president. Not only is she an American political scientist and diplomat, but she served as our 66th Secretary of State. 
How exciting would it be to hear her insight into the political scene in Washington? She is an accomplished pianist and golfer, and since I play a little of both, I thought we might have a starting point for our conversation. Her ex-boss, a Dallas guy, an avid golfer, is a member of the golf club where my husband Rodney and I play. Every year we are invited to this fabulous Christmas dinner where President and Laura Bush attend. This year, I asked him, what would it be like if I could have lunch with Condoleezza Rice. He said, you would be having the most fabulous lunch. And if she really opened up to you, you would hear why she didn't run. Golly, I wish I could have that lunch. If I had the chance to have lunch with my maternal grandmother, Julia O'Neill Cole. I would not only be grateful, it would provide me with the opportunity to express my appreciation for the legacy of strength and compassion that she passed down to her daughters and granddaughters. I can only imagine the strength it took to immigrate to the United States from Ireland as a young woman. When I have been faced with times of uncertainty, it is that legacy of strength that allows me to overcome, search for new opportunities, and recognize the blessings in life. Julia taught us compassion by always going out of her way to help others in need. As a woman's role in society evolved, I was fortunate to see the same strength and compassion in my own mother, who worked outside the home, volunteered in the community, and always made her family her first priority. I strive to emulate the values of strength and compassion in both my personal and professional life and hope that my daughters, Morgan and Megan, inherit the legacy of strength and compassion so that they can be strong women and also be kind and compassionate to all members of the community. Harriet Tubman was born into slavery in 1822. The treatment she and her family received was cruel and inhumane. When she was very young, her master hit her on the head with a heavy iron object, causing her to suffer migraines and seizures for the rest of her life. At 27 years old, she and two brothers escaped from Maryland to Pennsylvania. From then on, she rescued many slaves via the Underground Railroad at a huge risk to her and to those she saved. After Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, she bought land in Auburn, New York, and during the Civil War, she worked as a cook, spy, and nurse in the Union Army. Harriet made speeches throughout the Northeast on behalf of the women's suffrage movement. She dedicated her life for equal rights for all minorities, when she became elderly, she donated her Auburn home to her church for poor and handicapped people. At 93, she died in her own rest home and was buried in Auburn there with military honors. Clearly, ahead of her time, she demonstrated enormous courage, fighting for freedom for all God's mistreated people. I would love to have lunch with Harriet Tubman. When I moved to Naples with my husband, Bill, I investigated opportunities to gratefully contribute to our community, and I found Habitat for Humanity. Harriet would be amazed at the similarities of her humanitarian efforts and those of Habitat. Habitat families are working people who long for the stability, security, and hope for a home for their own families. Harriet Tubman and Habitat offer hope, hope for a better future where all people are treated with dignity and respect, where all can live and grow into all that God intends. I think Harriet Tubman would be an outspoken advocate and tireless volunteer for Habitat for Humanity. I know that we'd have a great time at lunch. 
Good afternoon. It's a great honor to be speaking with you today. Since moving to Naples 23 years ago, I've been very active with the League Club, on the board, grant giving, fundraising, and social activities, and a member of the book club interest group. Reading in general has always occupied much of my time and helped me keep my sanity. Thus the choice of one of my all-time favorite authors to have had lunch with. I was introduced to the books of Sigrid Unset, a Norwegian novelist, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1928. Her image has been on Norwegian currency and postage stamps. I was a senior in high school when my family was going through all of the challenges of a move from Flint, Michigan, which did not yet have lead in the water, to Birmingham, Michigan. My English teacher knew of my ties to Norway and recommended the works of Unset. My Norwegian heritage was strong. My mother's parents moved from Norway to the United States in the early 1900s. My grandmother was born 125 miles north of the Arctic Circle, just four years after Unset was born in 1882. I took my junior year abroad at the University of Oslo and visited Norway several times in later years, most recently going to the North Cape with our daughter, son-in-law, and grandsons. Sigrid Unset's most famous work was Christian Lavin's Daughter, a trilogy about the life of a woman in the Scandinavia in the Middle Ages, published between 1920 and 1922. There would be many topics to discuss with this strong woman. Her novels included many contemporary topics, including adultery, divorce, death, relationships between parents and children, and practicing Catholicism in a Lutheran country. Would you like to join us for lunch? If only we could. She passed away in 1949. I'm passionate about the power of the human spirit, the power that moves us to make the hard choices, to get back up and try again each time we fall, and to never, ever give up. I'm very inspired by people who courageously access that power to live big. And that's why I'd love to have lunch with Diana Nyad. She made history in 2013, when at age 64, she swam from Havana, Cuba to Key West. It took her 54 hours to swim those 110 miles. That's two sleepless nights, swimming with sharks and jellyfish, and all the challenges that come along with training and competing in any extreme sport. But for me, that isn't even the most remarkable aspect of her achievement. What really stands out for me are the four failed attempts over the course of 35 years before she successfully completed that swim. Her mind, body, and spirit came together, embracing failure after failure, and she used that failure to fuel growth and eventually her success. At lunch, it would be great to thank Diana for sharing her story, for helping me remember that living big is right here, right here for all of us, when we make the hard choices, embrace failure, and never, ever give up. I would love to have lunch with Margaret Thatcher. Years ago, I heard her speak and was captivated by her presence. Here was this larger-than-life figure, the longest-serving British Prime Minister in modern times, the first woman to hold that office, and the first elected female leader in Europe. She was in command of her message and the audience, and she projected a sincerity that piqued my interest. We know her best as the Prime Minister, but the road to that highest office was not smooth. She lost elections. She sometimes was the youngest candidate and sometimes the only woman. If you think about it, she started her po political career almost 70 years ago. She must have faced daunting opposition from naysayers at her very decision to run. Yet, she ultimately persevered, gaining recognition for her drive, preparedness, and fearlessness. What resilience she had. Margaret Thatcher certainly had flaws, but there's no disputing that she was a remarkable woman. 
She led Britain to a victory in the Falklands and employing diplomacy helped propel talks that ended the Cold War. Though she could be a polarizing figure, the Iron Lady always had a larger vision and stood toe-to-toe with challenge when she met it. She made a real difference. Oh, how I would love to spend an afternoon drinking root beer floats with my grandmother once again. Witty, inquisitive, with a twinkle in her eye, she always had time for me and taught me so much about life. She shared her love of gardening, taught me how to sew, knit, and crochet. She photographed everything and everyone with her Kodak Brownie Reflex 20. When my grandparents' basement flooded, ruining her wonderful collection of family photos, my grandmother was home alone. Grandfather was at a beer convention. She was so darn mad that she took a bus to Fort Des Moines and joined the Women's Army Corps. My grandfather had to pull a lot of strings to get her out. It took him almost a year. I loved her spunk, and I loved her stories. She left behind boxes of photos, chatty letters, jewelry and hats that I still have, but most of all, a wonderful memory for me of someone who had a zest for life and loved me unconditionally. This was an easy question for me. This may seem a little strange, but my bucket list actually includes amazing women whom I'd like to spend an afternoon with. So though hard to choose just one, I chose First Lady Michelle Obama as that person. The First Lady's intellect, her grace, humility, humanity, authenticity, her grit, and her passion for children, girls, and women make her the epitome of a phenomenal woman, the consummate role model. Recently, Our First Lady spoke to an audience, and it was absolutely one of her most moving and passionate deliveries. The next morning, I received a text from my son, and I quote, that Michelle Obama's speech last night was something special, made me reflect on my own amazing First Lady. That would be you. Love you, Ma. There are no words that can describe what that text meant to me but somehow I think you get it. First Lady Michelle Obama inspires me, like many of the women here today, to continue being the best that I can be, to continue being the voice for those who may have lost their voice, to continue impacting lives here in our own community. I hope today you too are inspired to give of your time, your tokens, your talents, all so equally important to help the women and children of our community.